This is our Play of the Week analysis. Play 1. Pukas floats it in. Pukas dives to save it. Rodriguez kept it alive, and Nebraska still in the point. Nunaviller blocked back. Nunaviller off the net. That's going to be a point for Nebraska. Play two. High up game by Back game. Solid falling ball. Just, when you got a 20 piece every single night, it uh, adds up quickly. Nebraska's wall there, time and again. This one off the net, but the point continues. Blocked back. Tight quarters at the net. They look wide, and it is wide. How can we accurately determine tape versus touch? Or one should trail the ball from the attacker's hand to see the next contact point. If we trail the ball after leaving the attacker's hand, we can clearly see that in this play, the ball hits the tape as opposed to the blocker's hand. Also given that a way is that the fact that the blocker's jump is late. So in this play, there's no way that the ball could have possibly contacted the blocker. In this particular play, the same thing occurs. The next contact point after leaving the attacker's hand is the tape as opposed to the blocker. Sometimes the players will tell the story. Watch the reaction by the Nebraska players. See how they're shaking their hands, signifying that there was not a touch on the block, and they are indeed correct. In the next play, watch the reaction again by the Nebraska players when they shake their hands of no touch. They appear to be correct. I would like the R2 to give me a solo four, a shake of the head, and get to the defending side if he or she has definitive knowledge of tape versus touch. At that moment, if the R2 has defended knowledge, I want him to get to the defending team side, give me a shake of the head, a four for hit sign to let me know that that ball is clearly not touched by the Nebraska blocker. In this play, the same thing. If my R2 has definitive knowledge, then I want him to get to the defending team side with a sort of four or a shake of the head to let me know that that is a tape versus a touch.